Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, Digital Spaghetti 96. Thanks for the great suggestion, Digital Spaghetti. You asked, why do skyscrapers sway instead of standing still? If you've ever stood in a skyscraper and thought, wait, is this thing moving? You weren't imagining it. Skyscrapers really do sway, and it's not a flaw. In fact, it's one of the reasons they're still standing. Let's find out why these towering giants are designed to wobble. Right here on Explaining Everything. We tend to think of skyscrapers as completely rigid, immovable towers of steel and glass stabbing into the clouds. I mean, they're called skyscrapers, not sky wigglers. So it comes as a surprise to many people that those mega buildings actually move. Not like cartoon style wobbles, but slow, rhythmic swaying. And yes, it's supposed to happen. In fact, if skyscrapers didn't sway, that would be the real danger. Rigid structures are brittle. Think of a pencil. Strong when used properly, but snap it the wrong way and crack. Flexibility is key. Engineers build sway into tall buildings on purpose because it helps them absorb the forces of nature instead of fighting them head on. One of the biggest culprits behind skyscraper swaying is the wind. And not just your average sidewalk breeze. We're talking powerful gusts at hundreds of meters in the air. The higher you go, the stronger and more unpredictable the wind becomes. At the top of the Burj Khalifa, for example, winds can reach speeds over 100 kilometers per hour. If you built a super tall tower that didn't move, those wind forces would have nowhere to go. The pressure would build up, crack materials, and potentially lead to catastrophic failure. Engineers instead design buildings to yield a little, to go with the flow. It's like the difference between a stiff tree that snaps in a storm versus a palm tree that bends with the wind and survives. So yes, Skyscrapers sway because they're actually chill. They're not fighting the wind. They're dancing with it. Of course, there's a limit. You don't want the top floors of a building flapping around like a flag. That would be both terrifying and nausea-inducing. In fact, if a building sways too much, more than, say, a meter or so at the top, people inside can start feeling motion sickness. Not exactly ideal when you're trying to hold a meeting on the 88th floor. To keep things from going full tilt a whirl, engineers install clever countermeasures. One of the most famous is the tuned mass damper, basically a huge weight inside the building that moves opposite the sway. Imagine a giant pendulum that reacts to the building's motion and evens it out. The Taipei 101 tower has one that weighs 660 metric tons and looks like a golden wrecking ball straight out of a superhero movie. There are also other techniques like outriggers, dampers filled with fluid, and even slosh tanks which sound like something from a pirate ship, but are totally real. All of these help control the sway, so it's just enough to be safe, but not enough to make visitors lose their lunch. Now, before you ask, yes, sway also helps with earthquakes, but that's a whole different kind of movement. Wind sway is slow and predictable. Earthquake motion is fast, jerky and horizontal. It's like comparing a slow waltz to someone suddenly yanking the dance floor out from under you. 
The cool part is that many of the design principles overlap. Flexible foundations, damping systems, and swaying structures actually help with both wind and seismic activity. It's not that skyscrapers were built to like earthquakes, but if one shows up to the party, the building knows how to keep its balance. So, why don't we just make buildings that stand perfectly still? Isn't that what we want? No movement at all. Actually, no. Perfect stillness sounds great on paper, but in reality, it means the building would have to absorb all that wind force without any give. That leads to stress concentration, fatigue, and structural failure. You'd essentially be building a very tall, very fancy glass popsicle stick, just waiting to snap in half. Flexibility is strength. The sway is part of the building's survival strategy. It's how they handle hurricanes, high winds, and the occasional over-enthusiastic party on the rooftop bar. So, why do skyscrapers sway instead of standing still? Because stillness is overrated and kind of dangerous. Engineers design these colossal structures to bend, not break. It's a little bit of physics, a little bit of engineering, and a whole lot of respect for Mother Nature. The next time you're in a high-rise and feel a gentle nudge beneath your feet, don't panic. That's not your imagination. It's the building doing exactly what it's supposed to do, swaying gracefully like a 90-story ballerina in a tuxedo. If this video helped you learn about the weird, wonderful, and wobbly skyscrapers, don't forget to like, subscribe, and maybe bring a puke bag when visiting the 88th floor. You just never know. And hey, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.